Good morning. Happy New Year. The sun is finally out after days and days of rain and wind and storms and floods. So that means we are going for a walk to take it all in. It's also extremely cold, which I am honestly not complaining about at all because it should be cold. I've been seeing a robin in this tree a lot recently. Currently I can't find it because I think it's off feeding itself. Aha. I just got back from my walk and I'm just gonna do a stretch. Been using this Lottie Murphy Pilates mat, which comes with an extra bit of padding and the thickness is so good, which if you have wooden floors and you have like very painful, in my case, I have very painful IT bands, like the bit that runs up my leg, so I can find doing things like clamshells and stuff and other Pilates moves really uncomfortable. So this is really revolutionizing my life, just to have that extra support is so, so nice. And it's so gorgeous. What a clever, what a clever friend. It's been a very long time since we've done one of these together. Favorite coffee beans and my favorite, favorite blend. This has been my favorite milk for coffee for, I would say quite a few months now. It's the cashew milk by Plenish. with cashew milk. Cashew milk is hard for art. So good. When I was on my walk, I realized that it's actually 12th night today, which is the day where you're supposed to put away Christmas decorations. I am willing to put away my cards and potentially the Christmas decorations on Ian. I'm not willing to take down my fairy lights just because they provide some really twinkly joy and it gets dark at like four o'clock so i'm gonna leave up my lights but i'm gonna take down my other decorations and this is a trick that i learned from my mum for any cards that don't have babies on them and that are still blank here i'm gonna cut off the front of the card and then i'll keep these in one of my Christmas decoration boxes. And then those I will use as gift tags on presents next year. Also keeping the front of our advent calendars because I think I could do like cutouts of the Christmas trees. So this is going in my ribbon and paper box. I will miss these little guys. I borrowed these from my mum. And this one is so cute. My friend made it. Everything looks so much more bare when the Christmas decorations aren't out. Ian looks naked. I have quite a few pots of ivy and berries and things like this. So I'm gonna replace them because they've been out for maybe like three weeks. Still looking very, very good. But I'm gonna replace these with like some sprigs of rosemary and stuff. I'm gonna do that now. I just picked up like a, a very few little kind of seasonal sprigs. I wanna just dot around the flat. I don't think I'm ever going to buy like, flowers again because there's just such lovely stuff in abundance just outside our door. That doesn't fit. I feel like it's better to use what, what there is like a, an abundance of very locally to you and not use all that much of it as opposed to potentially shipping in flowers from the Netherlands and various places abroad and things like that. I once posted a picture on Instagram of me holding a leaf and someone replied saying, how dare you pick a leaf from the tree? That's not very sustainable. And it was one of those moments where I was like, wow, you really can't even hold so much as a leaf without someone saying, it's your fault. You are the problem. And I've obviously internalized that. So this is why I'm like, I have to justify this. I'm gonna justify again. This isn't to say that like every decision we make 
isn't important and doesn't have an impact. However, I sometimes feel that the energy that we give certain people or individuals could be better placed and more impactful if we punched up a bit. I think there are just certain people on the internet who could benefit from thinking, is this the best use of my energy? Something I ask myself a lot as well, because I think it's so, it's so much easier to target individuals than it is corporations, billionaires, politicians, than it is women on the internet being like, hey, look at me. I get it. I get it. I do it. We have one, two, three. Lovely. The hyperfixation breakfast is back. So let us plate up. Also, I should say, I know it feels weird to be putting yogurt on toast, but this toast is quite sweet. I think it's got like um, molasses in it or some kind of date syrup in it or something. This is to me like a lazy girl waffle or a lazy girl pancake. This is my little vintage toast holder, which I think is so cute, but wow, this bread is a mess. Cinnamon, nutmeg, tahini, salt, agave. And that is it. There are lots of things that I've changed my mind about. Some of the ways in which I understood the conflict have changed with this land. And I did want to talk to you about my New Year's resolutions slash targets slash thoughts slash goals. If you are someone who hates this time of year, and finds the pressure of it all too much, then feel free to just completely ignore and skip this section of the video. Before we start, I just have to, because they're winking at me, I just have to show you these little pots that Max gave me for Christmas that he made. He made this one and he wanted to do it in like my kind of colors, which is so cute. And then he made it into a candle. And then he wanted to make me a pot where I can like, because I have a habit of just like throwing my earrings and rings down. And he wanted to make me a little pot where I could put my rings. Just this man. So the first section that I've written about is things that bring joy. Something that I really want to do this year is club together with two of my friends, Katie and Lil. And once a month, we want to do something together that is an entirely new experience for us. So not only is it a way for us to hang out um, and be with each other, it's also a way for us to kind of push each, each other to do things that we wouldn't necessarily usually try. Something else I want to do this year is more cold water swimming, wild swimming, cold water therapy and that kind of thing. I did this last year, I went in an ice tank. I feel like I spoke about it on one of my podcasts and I found it a very transformative experience. I did a lot of crying and I know that it makes me feel really good. There's the Robin! Hi! I thought I could hear you. Love you. So the past kind of week or so, I've been trying to do my cold showers. They are not very long, but I find them very rejuvenating. I also want to be really sure that I'm keeping my wardrobe and clothes as tidy as possible. For me, a tidy wardrobe is a tidy mind. This is just a really good way to wear your clothes more, take better care of your clothes. And obviously there is something really nice about opening my wardrobe in the mor morning and seeing everything kind of in its place. Something else I wanna do more of this year that I think will bring me a lot of joy is embrace the seasons a bit more. If you've been on this channel for a while, you know that I struggle with SAD I find this time of year and the darkness and the cold very difficult but I'm really trying and I think I am getting better at embracing it so I really want to ensure that I'm kind of bringing small elements of the season inside my space with me and of course going for lots of walks taking new paths when I go for walks so I notice different nature different trees different shrubs different bulbs all of that kind of thing and I just want to make sure that when I'm when it's winter time I'm really kind of embracing the cozy that might be through having like burning candles having little twinkly lights putting cozy clothes on in the evening and just really really embracing it and I think it's going to help me as I move through the year. Of course this is such a standard one but I want to be sure that I'm spending as much time with family and friends as possible. Because I spend a lot of time on social media I can feel quite overwhelmed, I can feel like I'm in my head a lot and I, I am quite sensitive, I'm quite... Um, I'm an overthinker, but being with friends and family and people who love and people I know love me and trust me and value me is the antidote to that. In terms of travel, my only 
big trip that I really want to do this year is go to Ghana to meet my friends at the Yule Foundation and really get a better sense of their work and get a first-hand sense of their work. So that's my kind of big travel trip for the year. In terms of reading, I am desperate to keep up the habits that I've developed from reading all the submissions for the Women's Prize for Nonfiction. I've proved to myself that I really can read lots and lots of books if I prioritise it. So post Women's Prize for Nonfiction, I really want to keep up that habit. There are certain things I really want to learn more about this year. One of those things is South African apartheid. This is something that I've only kind of started to slowly learn about through learning about Palestine and Gaza, but it's something that I want to learn more about. I also want to keep learning about abolition and kind of build on my learning from last year. And just obviously think about ways that we can build coalition movements that are related to social and climate justice. So this is just kind of general learning stuff that I want to develop this year. I did do a bit more writing at the end of last year. I wrote, I wrote my first article in The Longest Time for Atmos on Black Friday. I'll link it in the description box. It's about fashion and consumption of Black Friday. I find writing like fairly challenging. I don't think it comes super, super naturally to me, especially kind of longer form writing. Script writing I can, I find pretty easy because I've done lots of it in the past, but kind of longer form writing does challenge me. And I think it's good to challenge yourself. I don't set too many work goals because I don't like overwhelm myself but my biggest kind of work goal for this year is I have a content schedule um like sheet document online and I will just want to get better at planning out my content of course the priority overall is always quality not quantity following the radio 4 documentary that I did last year I'd love to do more broadcast and that kind of thing. In terms of activism, I want to continue organising with the group of women and non-binary people that I organise with. They are friends and organising with them is just an utter joy. So I definitely want to keep organising with them and hopefully hosting more workshops with them. We're trying to get funding to do um, in-person workshops this year. We did some online workshops last year that I spoke about a lot on my podcast and here as well, but we'd love to do some that are in person. And aside from that, I really want to focus more on doing local activism. So in the past month or so, I've been doing much more local activism. I've been going to local protests, local vigils, all for Gaza. And that is something I definitely want to do more of. So I'm actively reaching out to local groups to see how I can potentially support or be in solidarity with them. And that's something I really, really want to build on this year because local organising and community organising is so, so important. I also want to continue working with the All Foundation. I started working with them last year as a campaign advisor and that is something that we are going to be building on this year and then obviously as well my trip to Ghana will kind of tie into that and then I would love to do more talks at universities and schools I did a couple of these last year I've got one more in the diary for the next couple of months but I found them really really rewarding I love talking to students and learning from them as well I have been told by my sister Holly that I need to buy a brick phone because over Christmas I had my phone off for I think like a whole week. She basically has insisted that I need to buy a brick phone that only kind of very few people have my number for and that way they can just, it can be on all the time. It's barely ever gonna ring, but it's there for emergency. So that's something that I am going to do probably this month. Something else that I wanna do in regards to my phone is I wanna take four times one week breaks. So every kind of quarter I wanna take a week off social media. And I wanna make sure that I'm, I'm engaging in small acts of love for the people that I love. When someone writes you a little note and just leaves it without you expecting, I find that so, so romantic. And it's that kind of thing that I want to do more of this year. In terms of clothing and stuff, which is our final category, I want to ensure that I'm continuing my habit of really buying less and really considering all my purchases. Any purchase that feels frantic to me is not a purchase that I want to engage with. I want to ensure that I'm being really, really careful and taking my time over any purchase that I make irrespective of where it's from. I want to ensure that I'm reselling more. I think I have a couple of clothes in my wardrobe that I'm kind of holding on to for perhaps sentimental reasons or with feelings that I might wear them in the future, but I might not have worn them for a whole year. Um, so I'm gonna be reselling 
a few more clothes in my wardrobe that I'm not wearing anymore. And that is also me encouraging you to resell wherever possible. So if you have clothes that no longer fit you or no longer bring you joy or you can't give a good home to anymore, I would encourage you very, very strongly to avoid dumping them at charity shops and instead taking the time to list them on a resale app or give them to a friend or host a swap shop, something like that, because our clothes are our responsibility. When we give them to a charity shop or we take them to a take back scheme, we're actually labouring someone else with something that should be our responsibility. I'm also very keen to alter more of my clothes this year. It will definitely be making use of my local dry cleaners or an app like Sojo. I just want to make sure that my clothes fit me really well. I'm going to keep reading the labels of my garments to see how exactly they need to be washed and overall just washing my clothes less. So obviously with things like underwear and sportswear and vests and socks, those things need to be washed very regularly. But with knitwear, often they just need to be hung up. And then finally making sure that my wardrobe is tidy and clean and just setting aside a little bit of time to fold my clothes every day so it doesn't get into a mess. This is a big ambition of mine because that happens without fail or it has happened without fail in the past for me. But it's something I'd love to work on this year because I do believe tidy mind, tidy wardrobe. As the light is now coming down, it's quarter past three, I'm going to get a walk in and finish that podcast that I was listening to earlier. And then Max is coming home, which is very, very lovely. He's been working at a restaurant called Norma in London, where he's got, I think he's got a menu there this month. So if you're going to be in London in January, definitely check out Norma. Really, what I have to do after I get back from my walk is I have to read because I have 15 days to go before the first Women's Prize for Nonfiction meeting where we discuss all of the books that we've read. It is now Saturday, it's the weekend. We just went to the farmer's market with some friends and now we're gonna go for a walk. Oh, go. Some of them are history. Okay, I've done that with mine. What did you find? Nothing. That's all, that's all. <laughs> 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 She's so determined. Hello, it is now 25 past four, the sun has set. We saw friends yesterday and today and both times seeing different friends who we went for a nice long walk, which is honestly such a great thing to do at this time of year because it's a really nice way to see mates and also save some money because it doesn't involve spending money really. It also means that you get outside in the daylight for like a long amount of time and when there's no light that is just obviously very important. I'm gonna read now for the next couple of hours and try and finish one of the chunky books I'm reading which I'm enjoying so much. I'm so excited to tell you about so many of these books. I can't wait. But I did want to talk to you about a couple of TV shows before I go. So it's called Mr. Bates versus the Post Office. It is on ITV and it's a true story. The cast in this TV show are absolutely brilliant. To me, this is a story of worker organizing and resilience and solidarity. And it is so emotional. I think Max and I teared up a good few times last night watching it. And I would also recommend Smothered, which is on Sky. They are 30 minute episodes, so very kind of digestible. It's a romantic comedy. There's a really fun cast with lots of fun cameos. There are lots of references to romantic comedies that you might have seen before. The main kind of leading, leading man and leading woman are absolutely brilliant. They have great chemistry. The script is really funny. And it's just a really heartwarming, fun, easy watch. Oh look, also look, I've got a very on-brand mug. I've got my women's prize for fiction mug. So this is the mug that keeps reminding me to read as it is doing right now. Please leave a comment and let us know what your 2024 goals and intentions are. I'd love to read them and I'm sure other people would love to see yours as well. Right, I think that's it from me, but I will see you in the next video.